I'm Rachel Zadok. Um, I'm a writer and the founder of Short Story Day Africa um, that I run with uh, Tia Butemont and Nick Mulgrew in, from South Africa. Um, I am the uh, um, author of two novels. Both are pretty acclaimed. Um, they've both been shortlisted for quite a few awards. Um, James Quash Tokolosh was my first. Uh, Sister Sister is my most recent and it's the one that's kind of currently available. Um, Sister Sister, it's, it, it kind of delves into um, superstition and religion and faith in South Africa. I think a lot of my work deals with issues of questions of faith and belief and belief systems. So while all my work so far deals with that, all two books. <laughs> okay. okay, what informed the creation of Short Story Day Africa? Short Story Day Africa is a project that kind of grew organically in response to um, writers on the continent asking us questions. So it, did, it didn't begin as Short Story Day Africa. It's, it became it like this idea for a short story day to celebrate the African short story. And it's evolved into what it is now in response to how the writers kind of what, what they were asking for. So when we first started a Short Story Day Africa, it, it was an online project where we would find writers to interview, promote, put their stories up on our websites, um, on our Facebook page. And then writers started saying to us, we want, we want an anthology, you know, where can we publish an anthology? We want to be able to publish an anthology. So we started thinking about that and then we decided to run a competition. So we found sponsors for the competition and um, we launched it in 2013. And yeah, it's, it's been a kind of really, the response to it has been year on year, it's been growing. I mean, in our first year, we got uh, uh, um, 106 entries. This year, we got, it's three years on, we have 456 entries into the competition, which was a bit terrifying because the team is no bigger than when we started. So yeah, so that's a short story to Africa in a nutshell. Okay, um, the question of apartheid um, writing and how it's affected the literature of today. I think what's really happened is you had, like m most writing in South Africa during apartheid was writing against apartheid. So you didn't really have a, a space for much else that was, you know. And um, when apartheid ended, I think people moved, what happened is the South African literature scene was trying to find itself and trying to find, from moving away from that, moving away from writing about apartheid, they were, they were trying to find, and I think people were a bit sick of writing about politics. So there's been this really strange period since um, democracy where writers have been trying to find their feet and only now are writers actually beginning to write again about locality sites and the people I've met and what we've done at the Arcade Festival. I mean, I've loved the Arcade Festival. I think it's so well organized and the people that it's attracted are just incredible. I have met, um, for the first time, Mission Story to Africa's publishers, Emma and Bibi from Kosovo Republic. I've never met them in person before, so that was really nice. Um, Chris Abani going to his panel, the panel with um, Wow, there have been so many incredible panels. It's hard to, to express but um, or remember what they were all called. I really liked the discussion with um, uh, Maza and I can't even remember who was on that panel, actually. I can't even remember who was actually on that panel. But there was an amazing panel with Mona, who is now walking past. <laughs> um, well, jeez, uh, uh, there've been so many incredible panels. It's just <laughs> such a difficult question to answer without the program in front of me to jog my memory. Um, but yeah, the play last night as well. That was, uh, yeah, um, the transgender interview was really interesting as well. And the, the panel before that about um, queer narratives in Africa. I thought that was an incredibly um, powerful panel. Um, the feminist kind of writers on, have been pretty powerful as well, I think. Chris Abani's been really cool. I like meeting him. <laughs>